Well, hello. Today I'm showing you guys the location of Jeffrey Dahmer's former apartment here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now, unfortunately, his apartment was torn down in 1992, well, which I can understand. But yeah, once this open lot here was covered in snow, once stood the Oxford Apartments. His apartment was number 213. So yeah, for those of you who may not know who Jeffrey Dahmer was, he was a ser serial killer convicted of murdering 17 people. Kind of hard to believe, but this is where his apartment once was. So yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer was born in 1960, here in Milwaukee. In uh, 1968, his family moved to Bath, Ohio. Uh, that's where he claimed his first victim, actually. His second victim, and first of many in Milwaukee, was uh, someone he picked up from a place called the 219 Club. That's a place I'll check out soon. But yeah, so... Now i got to show you some other locations relevant to Jeffrey Dahmer in the Milwaukee area, so yes, let's dive in. Okay, now I'm outside of the 219 Club here in downtown Milwaukee, beautiful city. So yes, this was the gay bar Jeffrey Dahmer frequented the most. Picked up many unfortunate would-be victims here. And recently it appears the place is closed down. I'm assuming that could be a lack of business due to the pandemic. Oh, at least we can get a look inside without permission. Yeah, based on all the documentaries, this seems to be the bar he frequented the most. I'll try to get a look on the uh, other side of the street now. Okay, I'm now outside of the Ambassador Hotel in Milwaukee. So, this spot here is where Jeffrey Dahmer claimed his second victim, his first victim in Milwaukee. His first victim was in Bath, Ohio. But yeah, so, in November 1987, Jeffrey Dahmer met a man at the 219 Club where I was just at. He took him here, and actually when he woke up in the morning, he didn't actually have any memories of beat him to death but like when he woke up the man was bruised bloody beaten so he in he admitted in an interview that you know he must have he must have killed him but yeah so this is the ambassador hotel so on to the next location okay so here i just want to get a quick shot of the milwaukee county courthouse this is where jeffrey dahmer was convicted and was sentenced to multiple lifetime sentences, uh, totaling over, I believe, 940 years in prison by beautiful downtown Milwaukee. Okay, so real quick, guys, I figured before I go to the next part, I should explain a little bit about how J Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested. And then, you know, what happened to him in prison. So, in 1991, Jeffrey Dahmer offered three men outside of a club $100 to, you know, take nude pictures in his apartment. So, one of them agreed. His name was Tracy Edwards. So, he brought Tracy Edwards up to his room. And, you know, they sat down and Jeffrey put in The, the Exorcist 3, which was, like, his favorite movie. It came out, came out a year before. And, uh... Long story short, Tracy Edwards was able to escape, 
and break free and call the police. And finally, Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested in 1991. Now, when he was in prison in 1994, him and two other inmates were on a cleaning duty. One of the inmates' name was Christopher Scarver. Also, he named himself Christ, nicknamed himself. And uh, he beat him. He beat Jeffrey Dahmer and the other inmate to death with a blunt instrument. And that's how Jeffrey Dahmer died in 1994. So, yes. Uh, next, uh, I will be reading the final statement of Jeffrey Dahmer. Then I'll show the skyline of Milwaukee. And I warn you, it'll be really windy and hard to hear. But, yeah. Okay, now I'd like to read off Jeffrey Dahmer's final statement in court. Your Honor, it is over now. This has never been a case of trying to get free. I didn't ever want freedom. Frankly, I wanted death for myself. This was a case to tell the world that I did what I did, not for reasons of hate. I hated no one. I knew I was sick or evil or both. Now I believe I was sick. The doctors have told me about my sickness, and now I have some peace. I know how much harm I have caused. I tried to do the best I could after the arrest to make amends, but no matter what I did, I could not undo the terrible harm that I have caused. My attempt to help identify the remains is the best that I could do, and that was hardly anything. I feel so bad for what I did to those poor families, and I understand their right for hate. I know I will be in prison for the rest of my life. I know that I will have to turn to God to help me get through each day. I should have stayed with God. I tried it and failed and created a holocaust. Thank God that there will be no more harm that I could do. I believe that only the Lord Jesus Christ can save me from my sins. I have instructed Mr. Boyle to end this matter. I do not want to contest the civil case. I have told Mr. Boyle to try and finalize them if he can. If there is ever any money, I want to go to the victim's families. I've talked to Mr. Boyle about other things that might ease my conscience in some way if coming up with any ideas on how to make amends to these families, and I will work with him on that. I want to return to Ohio and quickly to end that matter so that I could put all this behind me and then come right back here to do my sentence. I decided to go through with this trial for a number of reasons. One of the reasons was to let the world know that these were not hate crimes. I wanted the world in Milwaukee, which I hurt so deeply, to know the truth of what I did. I didn't want unanswered questions. All the questions have now been answered. I wanted to find out just what it was that caused me to be so bad and evil. But most of all, Mr. Boyle and I decided maybe there was a way for us to tell the world that if there are people out there with these disorders, maybe they could get some help before they end up being hurt or hurting someone else. And I think the trial did that. I take all the blame for what I did. I hurt so many people. The judge in my earlier case tried to help me, and I refused his help. And he got hurt by what I did. I hurt those policemen in the counteract matter, and I shall ever regret causing them to lose their jobs. And I hope and pray they get their jobs back, because I know they did their best. I just plain fooled them. For that, I am so sorry. I know I hurt my probation officer, who was really trying to help me. I am so sorry, and sorry for everyone else that I have hurt. I have hurt my mother and father and stepmother. I love them all so very much. I hope that they will find the same peace that I am looking for. Mr. Boyle's associates, Wendy and Ellen, have been wonderful to me, helping me through these worst of all times. I want to publicly thank Mr. Boyle. He didn't need to take this case. But when I asked him to help me find the answers to help others if I could, he stayed with me and went over, went over went overboard in trying to help me. 
Mr. Boyle and I agreed that it was never a matter of trying to get off. It was only a matter of which place that I could be housed the rest of my life. Not for my comfort, but for trying to study me in hopes of helping me and learning to help others who might have the same problems. I know that I will be in prison. I pledge to talk to doctors who might be able to find some answers. In closing, I just want to say that I hope God has forgiven me. I know society will never be able to forgive me. I know the families of these victims will never be able to forgive me for what I have done. And I promise I will pray each day to ask for their forgiveness when the hurt goes away, if ever. I have seen their tears, and if I could give my life right now to bring back their loved ones, I would do it. I am so very sorry. Your Honor, I know that you are about to sentence me. I ask for no consideration. I want you to know that I have been treated perfectly by the jail deputies who have been in your court and the deputies who work the jail. The deputies have treated me very professionally. I wanted everyone to know that. They have not given me any special treatment. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Jesus Christ came in the world to save us sinners, of who I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in the worst of sinners, Jesus Christ might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the Only God, the honor and glory forever and ever. I know my time in prison will be terrible, but I deserve whatever I get because of what I have done. Thank you, Your Honor. I am prepared for your sentence, which I know will be the maximum. I ask for no consideration. suppose that will about wrap it up. I figured I'd end the video on a somewhat positive note with the beautiful skyline of Milwaukee behind me. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it somewhat informative. I mainly went on to focus on showing you know a few of the locations. Obviously this video would be a, a couple hours long at least. I want to do a documentary, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys some of the locations. My Ed Gain video has done pretty well, so I figured I'd do at least one more video like this, but maybe I'll do more. Should have more urban exploring content coming soon. So, as always, I thank you guys for watching.